So I want to preface this message. This is actually something I've been walking through for, it feels like an eternity. So a lot of this is coming from, uh, you know, my walk, my journey, and also my walk with people in our church family, and my walk specifically with the Lord, and so a lot of this comes from not just bland study, but intense life experience with Jesus. So uh, today's scripture is going to be Psalm 55, verse 22. And if I had to name this sermon, um, we could call it Your Burden, My Burden, Your Burden. We're going to be talking about our burdens. Psalm 55, verse 22, David is experiencing a great trial, and he's experienced great trial his whole life. And that kind of seems to be a theme in David's life, right? He's experienced the ups and downs, and you could say, well, he was a great king of Israel and all this, but it didn't come without a cost. You know, I mean, it was, you figure from, you know, being mocked as a young runt as a kid, being anointed by Samuel, slaying a giant and being mocked at and laughed at by the armies of Israel. It almost seems at times David is quite alone, even when people are around. We can kind of identify with that. You think about David when he's hiding out in En Gedi, where is this beautiful little stream that runs through the Negev Desert down to the Dead Sea, and it's just full of life, but it's, I mean, I've been there, and it's a stream that's in an in a area that has green in the desert that's no wider than this room. And he's hiding in a cave from Saul, King Saul, who wants to kill him. Because David has been anointed king. And even in the midst of being persecuted, it says that with David, he had his mighty men of valor with him. He had an army with him hiding out. And they wanted to take over the kingship. And there's this instance where Saul goes into a cave to relieve himself, and it just so happens to be the cave that David is in, hiding out in the wilderness with the promises of God in a barren land, holding on to this little tiny sliver of hope, this Engedi River. And all of a sudden, it could seem like the enemy has been delivered to his hands. And so what does David do? He doesn't kill Saul who's trying to kill him, he actually cuts a piece of Saul's cloak off, allows him to go, and he holds up his cloak to let Saul know, I could have taken the kingdom with my bare hands, but your blood is not going to be on my hands. Whatever happens in my life is going to be due to the Lord's power. That's submission. And you could imagine the burden that he had and even when you read this Psalm 55, he's, he's the king, and he has this burden. This whole Psalm 55 is about being um, wrongly done by someone, not outside like the Egyptians, but inside, people that are close to him. And maybe you've experienced that, but David has experienced all kinds of hardships and burdens and trials throughout his life. And this is what he says in Psalm 55, verse 22. He says, cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Never let the righteous be shaken. He'll sustain you. Yes, David, he sustained you in, in Gedi, in a cave. He sustained you and was not allowed, allowing you to be shaken in front of a giant. Whereas you shepherd your flock in front of a, lamb, a lion or a bear. And you see constantly this burden in David's life. And his constant, like the Psalms are constantly crying out to the Lord. 
And I think one of the things that I learned from the Psalms, and especially from David, is, is that he's, even though that you're not removed from trials and burdens of this life, it's appropriate to cry out to the Lord and to, and to share all of these things that are so gut-wrenching to your heart. And also, to never lose hope or, keep your, or take your eye off of Him. Because he's the one writing your story. And so we all have to carry burdens in this fallen world, all of us. Sometimes we forget that others are carrying burdens because we're so fixated on our own burdens. But we all have all kinds of sorrows and troubles that come to all of us. And sometimes you just feel like it's one thing after another. The reality is, is no one is immune to sorrows and troubles of this world. And even David shows you that, right? It's not just an issue of the poor, but even a king like him, the rich, experiences the results of a fallen and broken world. So how should we live? You know, even Job talks about this reality of living in this broken world. Job chapter 5, verse 7 says, Yet man is born to trouble as surely as sparks fly upward. Job 14, 1 says, Mortals born of women are of few days and full of trouble. It's the reality. Some of us at times carry heavier burdens than others. And also, we have little understanding of the fullness of a burden that maybe someone else could feel or carry in their life. Our natural response usually is to downplay it because it's not our burden. I even think of like little children. Like a lot of times as adults, we think of like children as their stuff being less. But if you think about it, in their worldview, the biggest thing in your life is the biggest thing. You know, it's the biggest thing when you were 18 years old and you had a, 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 a burden or a trial was the biggest thing. And now maybe you've gone through it and maybe you have another big thing. But even from the oldest to the youngest, whatever burden you're experiencing, it's gut-wrenching, even for children. I think sometimes with children we kind of look at our experiences and downplay the emotional impact and toll that burdens can have. We can even do that with one another. Someone that may be experiencing a burden that you have gone through years and years ago, and it doesn't seem that big. But believe me, a burden that hits the soul is earth-shaking, no matter what the circumstance is. I think a lot of times the burden is not even about the, the burden. It's not even about the situation. It's about the heart's ability to stay focused and trust in the Lord's ability, which is endless. The Lord's knowledge of the circumstance, which is endless. The Lord's goodness and care for you, which is love and goodness. Sometimes it's about setting our hearts right and our eyes on Him. So I started to think about what kind of burdens do we see, and I had wrote down a list of burdens that we see either from Scripture or maybe even just from life that you see, and the first one I came up with, I, I think about the, just the burden that you can find in a home, in your house, right? It should be a place of joy, but there's a lot of burdens in your home. You can have financial stress, sickness, caring for someone. I think about strained and broken relationships and family, communication, right? And I even think about just the general stress of raising your children. I've seen so many parents over the years just have this giant burden and heartache for their children, especially as they're trying to raise their children in a broken world. Think about the burdens of vocational, your vocation or your work. 
Man, this stuff can stress you out. Have you ever gone to work and you felt like you were going to vomit when you pulled up to the thing? I've done that before in the past. Where the burden is so real, like it actually is going to make you throw up. Like I'm dismayed. And you think about work relationships. Maybe it's a boss who's a tyrant or, you know, relationships with customers or you know, who knows what it is. Employees. Sometimes it could just be the demands or the responsibilities, the unendingness of those demands and tasks. Sometimes you feel like it's one thing after another. Those are very real burdens. And it doesn't really matter if you're the person that's the owner of the company or the janitor. You can experience bur burdens in the workforce or workplace that are just gut-wrenching. Think about burdens that have to do with your friendships. And that's actually from this Psalm 55, what David is experiencing here. Some of the people that you love the most can cause the greatest burden in your life because of your love for them. Psalm 55, verses 12 through 14, the, the same psalm that David wrote uh, that we read before, this is, this is the, the context of what he wrote. It says this, if, if an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide but it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God as we walked about among the worshipers. Our friendships can create really a sense of heaviness. Lost friendships can create a great burden. And there's physical burdens, right? Think about all those that are suffering from illness, disease, or even disability. People that live with a disability or experienced some sort of accident or now are going through or walking through an illness or some disease. I think about the crippled man that Jesus healed. This man was like crippled like from birth. And during this burden, his life was defined about this affliction. And then you wonder why he ran and jumped and shouted when he was healed. Well, because this burden that defined his life, to us, he just was healed. Oh, wow, amazing. But for this person, an affliction was lifted. The burden was released and lifted and the thing that had defined his life for so long had now changed because why he came in contact with Jesus. I don't think anybody could ex experience or understand the joy that that man felt because no one understood the burden that he bore all his life. And then there's temperamental burdens, right, which make us Prone at times to fear, worry, depression, or even despair. There's burdens of loss. You know, you think about loss of a loved one. That could either come through death or even relational loss, like d divorce. A sense of loss, losing a job, losing a career. These are real burdens that really cause heartache and shake your soul at times. John 11, verse 19, he, it, it talks about when Lazarus had died and Mary and Martha were mourning. And it says, and many Jews had come to Mary and Martha to comfort them in the loss of their brother. I think of that burden. Lord, if you would only have been here, you wouldn't have died. Think about the burden of disappointment, right? Have you ever been disappointed? The burdens that come with serving the Lord. I mean, you can look throughout Scripture and see the leaders of Israel, even the disciples that had this sense of just burdensome of leading people that just continually walked away from the Lord. 
Paul expresses this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, where it says, Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Daily, he says. I think a lot of times, wherever you have responsibility, you have burden in general. It's a hard thing. Responsibility for a child, it's a hard thing. No one understands the burden of raising that human like those parents. Uh, The burden of having a company or a business, no one understands that pressure and that burden like, like that owner. And I think the heaviest burden of all is really the burden of sin. In Job chapter 7, verse 20, it says, I have sinned. Why have I done, or what have I done to you, O watcher of men? Why have you set me against, uh, as your target so that I am a burden to myself? Job is saying, man, because of my sin, I'm a burden to myself. A lot of times people feel such guilt and shame for the things that they've done and the sense that they were wrong in that it creates an internal burden. But this one is much more difficult because it can never be released with outside of the forgiveness of the sin. A lot of times when people are in sin, you know what they do? I see is that they just kind of, they, they shy away. Sin's always done in the darkness. Your kids steal something or lie about something. It's always they're trying to hide it. It's always done in the darkness where it isolates you, and the burden is only yours. And that's how it goes with sin. So I was was thinking about burdens and the heaviness of life. I mean, have you ever experienced a burden that was so heavy that it was almost, the weight of it was so exhaustingly heavy that you just didn't even know how to respond or what to do. You felt like you couldn't even continue on the journey. You were at loss. So I started thinking about this story that I heard about. In 2015, there was hikers in Australia. And as they were hiking, they saw something that looked like a huge cloud on the ground. It's massive. And they were like, what is this big, white, hairy thing? And it really wasn't moving around a whole lot. And the closer they got, they they, they noticed that there was like a little face in there. And this thing was grazing. And it's just in the wilderness. Let's show this image. And to their amazement, it's this sheep whose fleece has got, got so big, it was almost the size of a small car. Massive sheep. And they could not believe what they stumbled upon. And what they realized was, is that that this sheep had been missing for six years in the wilderness. And it had been away from humans who take care of it. And it had gotten all scraggly and its fleece had gotten so large that it weighed this animal down tremendously. And when when they took the sheep back and they said, man, this... Thing could have so much problems. Like, would it even be able to use the restroom correctly? If it fell down, would it even be able to get up? It created this, the sheep was so vulnerable, and also the sheep was so skittish around humans, which, which really need to take care of this sheep and be able to, to shear its fleece and to take care of the sheep and shepherd it. And this sheep, they actually named it because of it, the problems were so big and evident to everybody. And they named it Chris, of all things, in Australia. Like Chris, I mean, come on. Crocodile Dundee, something? So they, they named this thing Chris the Sheep. They said this sheep was in such bad shape that he could barely walk. I mean, could you imagine that, where you, can, you have so much weight on you that you can barely walk, and you're alone in a desert place. There's no other sheep, no other reindeer to play with. There's no shepherd, and you can't defend yourself. So the reality was that this sheep, they took it back, and, man, it really had a hard time with being around humans. Humans. 
and they had to shear the sheep. So here's the ne next picture here. So they started to shear the sheep. The sheep was a humongous, right? Humongous, like a, like a little car. And so he hadn't been around humans for a long time, and it would make it more difficult for this sheep to trust humans to be sheared. So they had to sedate the sheep. It couldn't even get the help that it wanted because it had been so uh, far away from it, or so long, it's been so distant from its shepherd and in such bad shape, it didn't trust humans at all. So they had actually had to sedate the sheep to give the sheep the help that it needed. Let's look at the third picture. Most sheep, when they shear the sheep, it takes about two minutes to shear the sheep. This sheep, they said it took 45 minutes to shear the sheep because it had been so neglected and so just beaten up and it was just weary. And so they shear the sheep and you can see it in there. It's like unbelievable. It took 45 minutes. Let's look at the next picture. So then they went ahead and sheared it and they got all the wool and they weighed it to see how much weight this sheep was unnecessarily carrying. And before this, they found a sheep years before, and the sheep, his name was Shrek the sheep, right? And Shrek had a, had a fleece that weighed 60 pounds, and that was a world record. Well, this sheep, they weighed it, and it was 90 pounds, 30 pounds more than the world record. 90-pound fleece. And so that's a world record right there. Let's look at the next picture here. And you can see the difference between the before and after picture. I think of that scripture where it says that all have gone astray. What do you do in the midst of a burden? What's the answer? What's the response as those that are being shepherded by our great shepherd? Jesus Christ. Let's look at our scripture one more time. Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. When we look at David's psalm of anguish that this scripture is found in, you can see actually several different things that you should not do, that you should not do, when you're dealing with your burdens. The first one is, you can find it in verse 1 of, of 55. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. One of the things that you can see throughout Scripture is the people, in the midst of their burdens, a lot of times we turn to doubt. We doubt God. We doubt His love for us, our care for us. His concern for us that our burden gets so heavy and so big, how can you look at me with this giant fleece and care for me? It's easy when troubles come to feel like God is far away. I bet David, when he was in the cave hiding out, he, he felt and he anguished. That's why he writes these psalms like this. Don't leave me. Don't forsake me. Turn your face back to me. Please, Lord, I need you. There's nothing left kind of thing. We're not to doubt God. Don't doubt God. He is the only one that can shear this fleece. What you do in the midst of it is you dig a little deeper. You pray. You dig a little deeper and you look at your burden and you say... What is it that I'm actually experiencing? We'll go into that in a minute. There's also a temptation in the midst of carrying a heavy burden to complain. I'm a class A complainer. I can do this all day long. Now, a good thing for most people is they don't have to hear my complaints. I can hold them to myself, but man, they're hideous to your soul. Verse 2, it says, it gives us kind of like this illustration of complaints where you kind of get the sense of it here. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I am uh, distraught. It's like complaining is like a, 
it's almost like if someone is complaining, you, you know that this thing has been brewing in them for a while. And a lot of times in our burdens, we complain about it. A lot of times in our burdens, we automatically assume that the burden is from some exterior force out of our control. And really, complaints rarely bring an answer or resolution to the circumstance. Another thing that we can respond to burdens is the sense of despair. David often found himself with a sense of despair. He writes in in this Psalm 55, verses 4 and 5, he says, My heart is in anguish within me. The tears of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. There's a danger in the midst of your burden to just be in a perpetual state of despair. If you find yourself in an unbelievable burden, you have to find some way to get out of that fleece. We can't just sit there and complain about it. We can't just sit there and, de- and, and despair. We must find that shepherd. There has to be a light at the end of the tunnel. This thing is just growing and getting bigger and bigger, and eventually I won't be able to stand, and I'll be devoured. There's great danger in just being paralyzed with despair. The next thing is, is a lot of times there's this weird desire for escape. And not the, the, the escape of the circumstance necessarily, but everything. You ever feel like just running away? Right? Just run away. Get away from it. But I, I, I think sometimes you have to discern your burden and figure out what is it that God is doing in the midst of this. Here, even David in verses 6 and 7 of the same psalm, this is what he says. I said, oh, that I had wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. He wants to go back to the desert. Here he is king, and he has all of these people, and he's got all these problems and all these circumstances and all these issues within and out. And he's like, man, you know what? Life was actually a little bit better when I was despairing in the cave. So I wish I could fly back to that moment. I'm sure you've felt like that in times of your life. Sometimes it's just easier to escape, to leave, to quit, than to press on and experience deliverance. You have to discern the burden you're carrying. To be able to discern it, you have to ask the Lord, Lord, what is it? How is it that you want to remove this problem from me? And just fleeing is not always the answer. We live in an easy culture where people quit way too easy. We quit on anything. We quit in our jobs. We quit in our marriages. We quit in our families. We quit in our friendships. We quit in our church. We quit in our, all, everything. We just quit because it's easier. When, we, when it's a burden or when we find ourselves in despair. So what are we supposed to do with burdens? Because we all have them. They're all huge. And I think if we look at Psalm 55, verses, verse 22, you'll see it. You'll see three things, three things in this key verse of how we should respond to burdens. Let's read the verse again, Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. I think one of the things, like when I I was talking about discerning the burden, one thing you have to do about a burden is you have to accept the burden from the Lord. Accept the burden. The word burden here literally means that which, has, which he has given you. 
or gift. Gift. And I'll tell you, we don't look in the natural at burdens as some kind of gift. It's like someone slapping you in the face and saying, you didn't say thank you. <laughs> right? It's like, no, I don't want that gift. Did you ever think that burdens are an opportunity to trust God more? That in the midst of a burden, that instead of to run, it may be better to ask the Lord, what are you doing in this moment? And think about the sovereignty of God in the midst of your burden. To know that there's nothing that happens to you that is out of His control. There's nothing so great that He is perplexed as well. That he's starting to get nervous about what you're getting nervous about. And so he has trusted you with this burden for some period of time. And for some wise and loving purpose that you must discover. Think about Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says this, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purposes. Why does that statement even have to be made by the people of God? Because we all experience burdens. We all need to know that, you know what, He is sovereign, and there is something good that can happen from this. It's not because of bad luck. It's not because of fate. That doesn't mean that you don't have spiritual attacks, or sometimes you find yourself in in a, a, a burdensome circumstance because of disobedience. Israel found themselves in Babylon because why? They were worshiping other gods. Their heart grew far from him. But even in the midst of disobedience and God placing them there, it was like the hardship and the burden of that moment was to draw their hearts back to him. There's even a purpose in that. There's a purpose even in the discipline. One of the reasons that God gives us burdens to bear is that we, that, they, that these burdens might draw us closer to Him. I think of Psalm 119, verse 67. It says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I obey your word. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. So that means the affliction came after the going astray. But now, because of the affliction, I obey your word. So the question is, is will you accept the burden from the Lord that the Lord has for you in that season? It's the first step is accepting it. Then the next step is to cast that burden upon the Lord. The word cast here, let's look at our our scripture once again. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. That word cast means literally to fling or to hurl. It requires some sort of action and effort. You think about that word, it was used when Daniel was cast into prison, Jonah was cast into the sea, John was cast into prison, the devil will be cast into the lake of fire, and you and I are to cast our burdens onto the Lord. He is the great burden bearer, is what Matthew 11, 28 through 30 tells us. It also tells us that that he, he is gracious to those that sin against him. And those that are afflicted, and even to those that follow him, were to cast that burden. Another reason we cast our burden on him is that in our weakness that we may experience his strength. So he wants to be yoked with you. And even that yoked it was a term that was used for farming, like oxen, right? So you would take a dominant ox, and you'd put a weaker, a less dominant ox with it, and the more dominant one would carry 
the brunt of the weight, and that's what it means to be yoked to Christ. See, He wants to walk through it with you, but oftentimes we do like the sheep, and we run, and we hide, and it gets bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier. I even think about the psalm where it says, although I walk through the shadow of death, I, will, I won't fear any evil. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod and your stand are with me. They guide me. So it's not even just about understanding about how I deal with the burden. It's actually more important to sit there and say, okay, I understand that. That's good. But you know what? It's about another thing about actually doing that, walking, to experience the rod and the staff. In the, in the valley of the shadow of death. And I also think we learn a twofold lesson that we can't, and then He can. The third thing is we have to leave the burden with the Lord. Once we've cast our burden upon Him, He assumes full responsibility for this burden and for us. We're coming under His authority, under His strength, under His love, under His provision. We're trusting in Him. He will not let you down. He assumes, he assumes full responsibility. Now, you still may be yoked with Him. You still may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but the shepherd is going to guide you. It's the shepherd that will protect you. All you have to do is walk with Him. He will sustain you. It's His. Isn't that amazing that He's never... If you look at Psalm 55, verse 22 again, it says, He will never let the righteous fall. He's taking responsibility in the midst of a burden. And that lifts the fleece off the heaviness off. And I'm trading in my burden for trust. And that's how you cast it. 